In this episode, I'm going to take a first look at Azure AD's cross-tenant synchronization with Microsoft Senior Product Manager, Arvind Haranda. So if you're ready to learn, check this out. Greetings everyone, welcome to the channel, Annie Malone, Microsoft MVP, as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. This week, I've got a very special guest, uh, Arvin Harinder, Senior Product Manager in the Azure Active Directory team in Redmond, and he's going to tell us all about Azure AD's brand new feature, uh, cross-tenant synchronization, which has just come in to public preview. So this is an absolutely critical next step in the development of Azure Active Directory and a super cool feature that I know that you're going to be excited about. Now, if you've not subscribed to the channel, we love you to subscribe. Bump that subscribe button up there, ring that bell, and you won't miss out on the good stuff in the future. And if you enjoy the session, give me a big thumbs up. It really does help my channel. And if you've got questions, comments about this or any of my other topics, of course, just get them down below. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce my guest today, Arvind Harinda, Senior Product Manager on the Microsoft Azure Active Directory team. Hey, Arvind, tell us all about what you're going to cover today. Hey, um, so I'm Arvind. I'm a Product Manager on the Azure AD team, focusing on our user provisioning service. So how we help customers get user accounts provisioned into third-party apps like Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, ServiceNow, uh, on-premises applications, and I think the topic that we'll touch on today across Azure D tenants. Okay, fantastic. Now, um, you've, we've seen quite a bit of movement in the cross-tenant settings. Um, so, you know, last year we had the whole um, shared channels, which everybody got really excited about. And I kind of get the feeling this is something that folks are going to get excited about, aren't they? So tell us all about it. What does it do? Yeah. So last year we um, started announcing a number of different cross-setting capabilities, such as cross-setting access settings, um, where an administrator can trust MFA from another tenant. Um, we're actually building upon that cross and access settings capability in Azure AD B2B and helping you automate creating B2B users across tenants in your organization. So if you've got multiple tenants, uh, whether it's due to mergers, acquisitions, um, how you structure your business units, you can more easily create these B2B accounts across the tenants in your organization, enter access to apps across the tenants in your organization. You can also manage the lifecycle of those users. So if someone changes their name, changes departments, leaves the company, that information gets replicated across all of those tenants and that information stays up to date. Fantastic. So it sounds like this is kind of perfect for if you're like a, a group of companies that have gone out and you've got a number of tenants, you can kind of synchronize and share resources much easier and in, in a much more simple way. Yeah, it makes collaboration across the different tenants in your organization much easier um, and that end user gets to feel more like they're within one organization rather than trying to wade through different tenants. So this is now released. This is, is it general GA? This is general uh, availability? It's public preview. We just announced support earlier on this week. So this is like really new stuff. OK, this is cool. OK, so yeah, have you got cool. a cool demo for us? Yeah, I can bring up my screen and um, share what this looks like. All right, so here to set up the cross and sync, um, you've got two main um, places where you'll set things up. First is within external identities. And so here I'm actually in um, what I'll call my source or home tenant. This is where the accounts originate. Um, so in the ZT Tire tenant or the ZT uh, Tire Company tenant, I'll then provision user accounts into this Woodgrove tenant, which will be my target or resource tenant. Um, to set up the sync, I would first um, grab the tenant ID from the source tenant and go into external identities where I can create a cross tenant access policy. Um, I can choose to add an organization here. Um, 
I've already actually added this tenant in the past, so I can go down into um, inbound trust settings, and you'll see this new tab, cross tenant sync. And this is basically me as the admin of the Woodgrove tenant saying, I consent, um, or I will allow users from the ZT Tire Company to be provisioned into my tenant. Um, once I've set that up, I've actually got one more setting to check. Under trust settings, there will be a new consent prop section. So today, when an end user uh, accesses resources in a new tenant for the first time, they get prompted with a consent prompt um, where they'll say, I consent to sharing my data across tenants. We've got a lot of feedback from customers that this can be confusing for end users and doesn't make as much sense within an organization. So here, I as the admin can consent on behalf of those end users. With those two checkboxes checked, I'm actually done with the setup on the target or research side. On the home or source tenant side, I would do something similar where I set up a cross and access policy. And in this case, I would set up an outbound policy. Um, and I would check the same checkbox to um, auto consent or uh, do an admin consent. So that way end users don't face a consent prompt when they're provisioned across those tenants. Once that's set up, I can go into cross tenant synchronization, into configurations, and then I can add a new configuration. And that configuration just defines the provisioning logic between the two tenants. So let's take a look at uh, an example configuration that I've got. Here in the config, I can define which users I want to sync across these two tenants. So I can directly assign users. So in this case, I've assigned a user call cross tenant synchronization or I can assign a group to this configuration. And as users come in and out of that group, they'll automatically get provisioned or deprovisioned in the target tenant. Are they provisioned as guests or are they, is it kind of a pass through thing? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so today they get provisioned as B2B or external users. Okay. You can choose to make them type member or type guest. So today you're probably familiar with setting up B2B users as type um, guest, that's the default. When you use cross and in sync, the default will be member. Um, we wanna provide a better experience for users within um, an organization. So that way it doesn't feel like they're crossing um, organizational boundaries. You can choose to change that default to guest uh, and we'll provision those users as guest accounts. Now, are there any uh, additional privileges that you need, or is it just uh, global admins on either side? Um, you would need the hybrid admin role, and that would allow you to set it up. Okay. Is that in addition to, like, if I was a global admin? Oh, if you're a global admin, you'll be able to set that There's up. No problem. You wouldn't need so, any. So if you're not a global admin, then hybrid admin would do the job. Yeah, great. Yeah. One of the nice things um, about setting up cross and then sync using um, this out of the box functionality is you don't have to uh, grant any like uh, graph permissions. If you were to set up cross and sync um, manually or by calling the APIs, you would probably register an app in the target tenant and provide that uh, user.readwrite.all or directory.readwrite.all. Um, in this setup, there are no credentials that you have to manage. You just need to provide the tenant ID for the target tenant and put that cross tenant access policy in place that we did earlier. And our sync engine will check to make sure that that policy is in place every time it starts up. Um, there are no credentials to manage or anything like that across the two tenants. Um, so I'm, I'm sure folks are going to ask this. Um, are there, um, has Azure AD, the PowerShell module, uh, has it been extended to include all of this? Right now we have graph commandlets for everything um, that I'm showing here. Everything in our UI is powered by um, publicly available Microsoft Graph APIs. Okay. Um, you can call those through PowerShell commandlets. Uh, we don't have native commandlets yet. That's something that we're working on. Um, in these attribute mappings, you can, we've got a set of defaults, things like display name, job title, um, department. You can choose to remove them or add additional mappings. Like if you've got directory extensions, you can choose to map them. Um, I'll bring your attention to one mapping in particular which is the show and address list property. By default, it's set to direct. If 
if you set it as a constant with value true, um, it will populate the shown address list attribute as true for each user. And this will help you find users across tenants. It'll light up um, a unified gal and you'll be able to search for and find users and other tenants in your organization. Um, what would be the implications of a two way thing or, or is it just designed to kind of be a one way thing? So it'll be a, a one way sync so I can set up sync from zero tire uh, into Woodgrove, but then the admin from Woodgrove can also set up their own sync to push their users into ZT tire so and that way they can get all users um, the organization in those two tenants. If I go into cross and synchronization and back into the configuration, I can assign that user that I just created. When you do the assignment, you'll be able to do either static groups uh, or dynamic groups or individually assigned users. Uh, for now, I'll just use an individual assignment. Now, here's a question that I'm sure a lot of people are going to ask. Mm -hmm. What if one of your tenants is hybrid? with Active Directory in there somewhere as well, and you're using things like Azure AD Connect, what would the implications be there? Yeah, so if you've got users in AD syncing up to Azure AD, um, you can choose those users. Uh, they'll be in scope for provisioning, and you can provision them into the target tenant that you want. Um, whether it's a cloud user or it's um, a hybrid user, you'll be able to synchronize them across tenants. Um, one thing we wouldn't allow right now is syncing external users. So if someone is a guest in your tenant, you can't then export them to another tenant. You have to sync the users from their home or um, their home tenant. And now the service is just going through importing the user from Azure AD. It's checking, is there an existing B2B user in the target tenant um, with the same information? And if there isn't, it'll go ahead and create a new account. So it went ahead and created an account for um, two, three in the target tenant. You go into users, it takes a few seconds, but the user should show up. And here we've got the user provisioned. We now have a new account. Um, the user type is member, and any properties that existed on that user would have then gotten synced across. Any changes that happen to this user, if we change the name, change departments, um, that information would then automatically get updated across the two tenants. Now, here's a question I'm sure you're going to get asked. If you would, obviously you're syncing into a particular tenant, if I was company A syncing into company B and I had specific attributes that were kind of sensitive, private, do you have provision to kind of hide those and restrict access to those particular attributes? So we don't have the ability to hide attributes through cross tenant sync. Um, yeah, we'll probably need to understand more around some of the requirements and build out an experience there. But actually updating the attributes would be limited to uh, administrators like um, user admin um, who will be able to actually make changes on them. So, the, I mean, you would need to do, have a little careful thought before you start hitting buttons and things here. I think, and it would be definitely a kind of a trusted business partner or part of an organization or a different division or something like that. That's kind of what we're targeting here, yes? Yeah, the intention with this is to be used within an organization. If you're doing cross organization, we've got capabilities like entitlement management and access packages that will facilitate that cross organization collaboration. That I think I, that's all that I had to show in the UI. Um, so you'll be able to define which users you want to provision. Um, you'll be able to define which attributes you want to provision. You can define transformations using a similar language to what you have with Azure D Connect, um, or if you want to switch the um, first name and last name, put a comma in between and add the domain at the end or something like that, you can define the transformations that you need. Oh, uh, you'll also have access to uh, all of the logs, um, same as if you're doing our uh, Azure D Cloud Sync or HR provisioning. This is the same sync engine um, through the provisioning logs. You'll be able to see all of the events that um, the provisioning service, um, or all the actions that the provisioning service took. Um, uh, in terms of documentation, I noticed Alex's 
um, and also I think you've got your your name on it as well. Uh, some documentation on this is now available, and for those folks who are watching, I'll post that. I'll include that in the uh, the description below. Um, Docs.microsoft.com. There it is. All right. Uh, so definitely sign up for that preview. Really appreciate your uh, your demo there. It's absolutely awesome, and I'm, I definitely think a lot of people are going to be excited about this. Yeah, I'm glad to hear we're excited to put this capability out. Um, we've seen a lot of excitement as um, Alex has tweeted the capability out, and um, we're looking forward to hearing from customers and seeing um, how it works. So there you have it. Wasn't that cool? Arvind Hiranda, Senior Product Manager uh, over there in Redmond as part of the Azure Active Directory team. Thanks so much, Arvind, for your time. I really do appreciate that. Hey, listen, if you enjoyed that, go ahead, bump that like button up there. It really does make a difference to my channel. And if you've got questions, comments on this session, or in fact, any of my other sessions, of course, just get them down below and I will do my best for you. Hey, and if you've not subscribed, well, bump the subscribe button up there, ring that bell so you'll be notified of all the new videos that I've got planned. So that's it for this week. Thanks so much for joining me and also for my guest, uh, Arvind Harinder, Senior Product Manager over there at Microsoft. I'll see you next time. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.